Ethiopia is a great place to train. It's at high altitude, it's about 10,000 feet above sea level, and it's where most athletes do go to prepare in the championship or for races. And it's just nice and quiet, and uh, it's got everything you need for training. I do miss my family when I'm away. I've got four kids and I do miss them, but at the same time, when I'm in training camp, I just need to, you know, eat, sleep, and focus on training. It's important is what I need to do to be the best. If I want to be the best, challenge these guys and, and continue to break records, then I have to do this. It's no secret to what I do. Everybody knows that for the last decade, I've been winning races and doing the same thing. The team is growing. There's probably about eight of us now. Most people doesn't know what Modena means, but it means sir in Somali. It's from the Sir Mofara. He gave us a chance to train with him first and to get advice and to be champions like him. When you train with the uh, Olympics and World Champ, uh, it means a lot and learn from him is a, it's like he's a brother like to me. A lot of members of the Madani team, they come from different regions in Somalia. There was war and there's a lot of problems in Somalia. We believe that sport brings us together. We're there to help each other in training and to just have a joke, have a laugh. Because if you're not enjoying training, then it's, it's hard. It's hard to motivate yourself. So it's mainly just to have fun, enjoy it. But every man to himself, when it comes to competition, there's no friends. You know, they're there to compete and win medals and, and do what they can. We has an identical twin. We both grew up in Somalia and I came to Britain at the age of eight. Unfortunately, he, he didn't come as he got sick at the time, really sick. and. After that, my parents went back to him, but then civil war kicked in, so we end up not seeing each other for 13 years plus, and it's like nothing has ever changed. We still had that connection, we still look like. He was actually a little bit skinnier than me, would you believe it? Not these days, though. <laughs> so tired. I was in proper deep sleep. For the last three days. Mm -hmm. Let's try it in there. Yeah, they test you more because you win more medals and the better performance you do, the more you do, the more tests you do. I have like one hour slot where you have to put down your time where you are every day, no matter where you are in the world. 7.30 to 8.30 is my testing slot. You can have more than, I think, it's, it's two or no, three missed tests within two years, 18 months. Wow. Your, yeah, your career's done. Okay. This can just make light from the flashlight. Yes. I enjoy what I do, and it's just, you know, part of your job, what comes with it. And you have to respect that and get on with it and just do what you have to do. Hold it, hold it. Been cheated at a medal before. My European cross country medal. I collapsed afterwards and then later I'm thinking that, oh my god. And then you find out, I never got it back. But what can you do? I'm gonna pee in this thing. First time my my mum saw it, she was so shocked. And now walking in the bathroom with me. Still not what to say. It won't let me do the location because of the internet problem. Hey, look at the shoes. It's a mess. I'm actually going to put a new pair today. If I can find the other one. Look at the whole one. I need that for you. 
People hold hands, they look. <laughs> Just get married. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> I love running because it's like what you put is what you get out when you cross the line. It's just that 30 seconds, 20 seconds with joy, happiness, and that's what I search for each time I do, you know, compete. I have to put in the work, try and think about my decisions that they're doing, envision myself what I need to do in order to win races. Today's just tired, just knackered. <laughs> Imagine like almost running close to a marathon and then going again the following day. Uh, that's always tough on the body, but there's no chill day for me. There's no day off. If you ain't enjoying it, you don't get up in the morning, you feel like you're doing it just because people expect you to do it, then it's not the right thing. You have to do it because you want to do it and still have that drive, which I do. When I lose that, then I'm there to hang out. <laughs> Yeah, this is our uh, first place after uh, run. Most of the time we run here down, and then uh, we come back here for juice, uh, chiba. We sure we do everything together. We eat together on the Sunday run. After long run, we normally go to nice restaurants, eat up, help each other. For me, when I'm in Ethiopia, I try and spend as much time as I can with the community. Obviously, if I'm training in a country, you've got to respect the guys, and I quite enjoy going to the local coffee, just getting out of the hotel and just going across the road and find a traditional coffee where it's fresh. You can see the coffee beans are green. They burn it, they break it down, and they put it right in the pot. It is the best coffee. If you want to really taste a real Ethiopian coffee, then you've got to go to the local hut. Real coffee. Then it was time to come down to London. I guess you can say London's a little different to Ethiopia. And Mo, just head ahead. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Mo, just here, please. We have more. That's it. Looking for this camera. Camera. Thank you. 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 I think this athlete needs a little introduction. He is by some margin Britain's most bemedalled athlete in history. Four Olympic golds, six World Championship golds, five European titles. I mean, that's just a small print. Please welcome Sir Mo Farah. <laughs> Mo, of course, has a, a busy old week. Um, he only got back from Ethiopia yesterday. Today, got back from Ethiopia. Sorry, this morning, yeah. This morning. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling the pressure now? I mean, you're an, we know you're an athlete who thrives on pressure. It's different. Obviously, uh, the last three months I've been in Ethiopia, completely different. Uh, but, you know, I'm here to do a job on Sunday. If I compare what I was doing now to 2014, it, it's definitely a lot different. And for me, it's something I always wanted to do is to run the marathon and, and to mix in. And I've seen a lot of great athletes gone in from track to marathon. And I believe I can run a decent marathon. Then, it was time to race. Months and months sacrificed for this. This is it.
I was expecting the race was going to be slower, it's going to be two pacemakers, but that didn't happen. I look back after 500 meters, there's nobody behind me, and we went through halfway ridiculous time. We're going to break the world record by two minutes, and I had no choice but to go with it. And there was a couple of hiccups along the way, missing my bottle, but I was, you know, pleased to be able to think. I ran 206 and a British record, it was nice to have that. Third place, of course, it's for minutes, most of you, Mo Farah. You guys are having too much fun, that's the problem. Mo, if you'd like to tune in when you're ready. One, two, one, two, one, two, yeah, yeah. To finish third and run a personal best British record and to finish in the podium, uh, I can't do any better than that. Even though last 10k I was bollocks, I should say. <laughs> what makes it worth it is doing well and just that moment where you know you get that feeling and you just, you're searching for that feeling again.